This is the example on slide 49 of our chapter 19 PowerPoint, and the question states, consider the reaction for the decomposition of carbon tetrachloride gas. It states the reaction and then gives us two values, a change in enthalpy and a change in entropy. And it asks us to calculate the change in Gibbs free energy, delta G, at 25 degrees Celsius and determine whether the reaction is spontaneous. And then B, if the reaction is not spontaneous, determine at which temperature, if any, the reaction becomes spontaneous. So um, Gibbs free energy, um, if it has a negative sign, that means our reaction is going to be spontaneous. If it's got a positive sign, it means it's non-spontaneous. <coughs> and then we're going to be using the equation delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And T is going to be um, in Kelvin. So it states several times in the problem that our temperature is 25 degrees. So 25 degrees C plus 273 Kelvin gives us 298K for our temperature. That's our T. Um, one more thing we're going to need to do before we plug all of our values that we were given into the Gibbs free energy equation is to make sure our enthalpy units are not in kilojoules but in joules because we're going to need it um, in joules basically to add and subtract with the um, entropy change. So our 95.7 kilojoules, um, if we move our decimal over three spots, multiply by a thousand, it becomes 95,700 joules. So now we can plug everything into this equation right here. Our delta G equals delta H minus T times delta S. So delta G, that's what we're looking for. We're basically trying to figure out if our sign's positive or negative, if it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous, is equal to 95,700 joules minus 298K times 142.2 joules per Kelvin. So notice Kelvin are going to cancel out. And then this is why we had to have our, um, oh, I lost my train of thought, our enthalpy in joules so that we could add and subtract the two. Um, so if we multiply the 298 by the 142.2, we should get... 42,400 joules. And then if we subtract those two from one another, we should get positive 53,300 joules. So our delta G is positive, which means my reaction is non-spontaneous. So since it is non-spontaneous, the second part of the question asks us to determine what temperature the reaction becomes spontaneous. So the very first time that something can be technically spontaneous is when delta G is equal to zero. So the way we're going to figure out the temperature is basically set our delta G in our highlighted purple equation here equal to zero plug in our values for delta H and delta S and solve for temperature. All right, so for the second part, for part B, we're gonna determine the temperature, the reaction becomes spontaneous. So like I just said, we're going to set G, delta G, equal to zero. We're gonna plug in our delta H, which we were given, 
the 95,700 joules minus, we're looking for T, times uh, 142.2 joules per Kelvin. So now, basically, if we divide both sides by T, I'm sorry, not divide by both sides, we'll divide um, this side by 95,700 joules, that side, oh, I'm sorry, let me erase that and start over for a second. We are not going to divide, because that's algebra, we're going to, um, we're actually going to, let's add the T 142.2 joule per Kelvin to both sides. There we go. And then we're also going to divide this 142.2 joules per Kelvin to get it by itself. So then T is just equal to 95,700 joules divided by 142.2 joules per Kelvin. Joules cancel, 1 over Kelvin becomes Kelvin, and our T is equal to 673K. So that's the temperature that we need to achieve in order for our reaction to become spontaneous.